Hey everybody, hope you are doing well today. Um, have another video here around outlier detection. Um, this is, I should note, this is a follow-up to the video I just made around LOF. So I do recommend you watch that one first. Pretty much everything we talk about in this video is irrelevant to you unless you watch that video and kind of understand you know that algorithm why we use it and everything like that it'll also help you understand the issue with that algorithm this video is solving um, so i do highly recommend you watch that video first this you know you could watch this video with without it but some of the stuff not might not make a bunch of sense and i do think it'd be a little bit easier if you have seen that one first um so let's dive into it. One of the questions I I get, and you know, I, I kind of touched on this last video with localized outlier factor, is it does not have a predict function. So you cannot train it on a bunch of data and put in new data and have that be classified as an outlier or not outlier. That doesn't exist. It has a fit predict, which means you take all of your data and you put it in unsupervised, and it will tell you which ones are the outliers, um, which is nice. That's that that has its its usefulness in production. You know, allows you to do sort of a batch understanding. It allows you to get going without you know supervised labeled data. But if you're using this in a production system to say track analytics or track anomalies and, and things like that, um, it does make it a little bit more complex because um, you can't just feed it record by record and have some sort of um, trained relationship from before. Um, so that was something I do get asked about with it. And I mentioned in that video that um, we would talk about how to use local outlier factor in this setting. So we're gonna take a look at this. It should be fairly straightforward and quick, especially if you've watched the previous video. Um, there aren't a ton of changes to make to what we've done to support this. Um, but there is a few that we want to look at here. So just like we just saw before, um, we have our query data set with the user queries and the query length. Um, we load that right up. It has about a thousand of those in it. Um, to make this a example that has multiple features, I also run it through this uh, noun and proper noun detection model and then it sums those up. So for each record, we have the user query, we have the query length, and then we have the number of nouns or proper nouns in it. Um, I think it makes it a little bit easier um, to compare to like production use cases because a lot of production use cases for this type of stuff, you don't just have one feature, you have a ton. Um, so I wanted to add something in there, fairly simple that allowed us to do that. Just to kind of break the code down, if you didn't watch the video before, we're using these spacey, um, named entity recognition model. We just go through each of the rows and we run the model and we sum each time a um, token gets tagged with noun or proper noun. So the model will go through each of the tokens in the query and say if it's a noun or a proper noun or nothing. It'll also say if it was like an address, a name, something like that. Um, and so we just sum those up and then we are able to go from there. You can see we have our queries. We have our query length and then we have our noun count. So three columns, thousand rows, um, very nice. So now we are going to create a train test split of this data set. In the use case we saw before, this didn't really matter um, because you know we don't we don't really have like an evaluation for it. We're, we're just taking all of the data and we're predicting anomalies on all of it. It's unsupervised. There's nothing we can really do there. With this one now, it does make a little bit of sense because you know you would have in a production setting your, your training set, um, and then you would have your inference time data that comes through as you go from there. Um, so we created our train test split. The only change, change is, I guess there's 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 two that you need to make to local outlier factor to be able to use this in another setting in this sort of um, production inference time setting is just setting no sorry I can't spell novelty equal to true. Um, what we are doing here is we are changing it from an outlier detection 
um, use case to what's called a novelty detection use case. Slightly different. Um, I won't go to the specifics around it. It, it. Quite honestly, people use those terms in the real world interchangeably, but from a very technical, very math heavy um, use case, those are considered different. And so they have specified these with Psychic Learn as standard LOF for outlier detection. And then they have a parameter to change this to novelty detection, which allows us to use a predict function to predict on new data. Um, the other change is now we don't have fit predict, we have just fit. So we fit our model on our training data and now what this allows us to do is do something like this. And it's actually, the, it wants to predict it for me, although I wanna use the test data set, of course. Um, and now we can predict on our new data. And we will let it, oh, I didn't, sorry, I didn't print it. Duh. I was wondering why it didn't give me anything. And there we go. We have our prediction. Um, so very simple. Um, but this is something I do get asked about quite a bit. A lot of people set up LOF and they assume that just by the way we've defined it, that they can use it in, in ways that you would use like um, isolation forest or like support vector machines and stuff like that. You can't, it is slightly different. Um, it is unsupervised by nature, but you can sort of set this up in a novelty detection setup where you fit to your data first and then you predict on the new data. You can go you know, one by one with the prediction, you can do it in sort of a batch like this one. Um, you will see, as we, we discussed this last video, but ones are inliers, negative ones are outliers based on what is predicted. Um, there are also ways, this is the, the results from the last video, um, but there are ways to visualize this um, with colors and things like that so that you can see what the new records look like, but it is that simple. Um, it's just those, you know, a couple of code changes. So hope that was helpful. Hope you are able to, if you wanted to use this in more of a production real-time data setup, then uh, maybe working with like an unclassified or a unsupervised data set or like data cleaning and things like that. Um, this does allow you to do something a little bit different. So hope that was helpful and I'll see you guys in the next one.